the sideline during games, Brian, working through the game. Where, where do you feel the confidence and finding solutions mid game come from, and kind of what what works for you guys in those moments? Just um, just constant communication. You know, you got to be able to talk through things as defenses and teams give you a ton of different looks and. Um, you know, do, they do a great job in this league of doing that. And um, we, we kind of face that week in and week out. So just being able to communicate um, just as needed and then go out there and execute. You know, I think the foundational piece of everything is just being able to execute um, to uh, execute on a high level, regardless of what's going on. So that's what it comes down to. Kevin, when you look at the 49ers front seven, I mean, do they kind of remind you a lot of, of yours, just like how Deep and talented, and how they get after the quarterback. Um, I really, they're really, 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 really good um, defense. Um, they have great players at um, every position on that D line, and I mean, very elite players. You know, so um, you know, we, we we have to be ready for that challenge. You know, and it's a it's a great team. It's a great defense. Where's yeah, Fred, where's you Fred Warner in particular bring to that? That unit. Yeah, he's um he, he flies to the ball, he leads, he's a leader on the on their defense. Um he sets the tone in a ton of different ways just from watching and I'm um, having competed against him. So, you know, it's it's a it's a huge challenge for us and and then their their their, their defensive backs are playing really well as well. So Jay, well with uh, Alabama and Georgia getting together this this week, uh, obviously a lot of representatives both of those teams. In the, in the locker room, are you guys doing a, a watch party or anything like that? What's the conversation to be like? No, nah, no, no watch party, unfortunately. Um, but I've, I've been keeping up with you know the things that Alabama's been doing and how Milrow's been playing, and you know it's exciting to see what he's been able to do um, and take advantage of his opportunities when his when his phone is rang early in the year. So um, excited for him, pulling for him, obviously. And you think mentioned that's coming out of that Sorry. one. Not yet, not yet. Uh, we'll see what the week brings. Can't do that here, though. Get in trouble. <laughs> you made a comment uh, last year that your week would be kind of satisfying until after the last game. Um, I, I guess, do you allow yourself to appreciate, though, the run you guys are on and, and the way you guys are playing, or is it all chasing the standards that, that you set? Yeah, I don't want to get too far ahead. You know, I just truly try and um, be in the moment embrace the moment and enjoy the moment. Um, and I'm sorry if you don't think I find enjoyment in these moments. I'm not um, suggesting that. Because I do. Um, you know, it's just, um, you know, you, you you have different different things um, that go on in the game. You have different things that um, you have to be able to handle and uh, approach appropriately. And um, you know, you just you just really never want to get too high, never get too low. That's just you know, this is how I've always approached it, and um, just just continue to keep keep your focus on the main thing. Having grown up in the South and played college football primarily primarily there, how, how have you handled uh, the conditions that that are generally occur later in the years here? And obviously, a lot of rain <coughs> played, played in cold rain. Looks like they're calling for rain again. Yeah, we see out in a few weeks. How have, how have you adapted to that? Yeah, you. Uh, you obviously can't let an external factor uh, dictate the game or dictate how you approach the game. Um, of course, it's, it's awesome to have uh, down south in Florida or in Houston or um, wherever the domes are. You know, those, those things are obviously convenient for that. But, you know, you also want to try and use it as an advantage. You know, it's something that um, we're able to prepare in and prepare for. and. Um, there are a lot of other teams that don't don't experience those conditions, so when they have to come up here, it's something that they have to deal with. So it's, it's just how you look at it and how you approach it. You mentioned defense is giving you different looks. They do a good job of that. What's What's been – we talked a lot about that early in the season, about teams throwing different things at you guys. What's that been, the evolution of that 10-1 and one last year, 10-1 and one this year? How much different has it been as people attacking you? Um, I think it's just, I think it's just uh, generally speaking, I think it just changes from year to year, you know, and 
different teams attack you in different ways. Um, they learn, they improve, um, they change things, and um, you just got to be ready for everything. You have to be ready for everything, you know, and you have to be so confident in what you're doing and executing the fundamentals of whatever the play is. Kind of, um, in terms of offense and how they work with quarterbacks, some seem to have you know, two checks, one check maybe in offense. It seems like they give you a lot of options. What way does that help you in those kinds of moments when you're not a shoot? Yeah, there's, there's an opportunity to do some things, I think. Um, generally speaking, when you talk about that, it's it's all everyone on the same page with it. Um, everyone's on the same head, um, and there's an expectation to do certain things in certain moments. Um, but it's it's just a matter of communicating. Um, everybody understanding what's going on, and I think that always eases it. Jalen, the confidence. That, uh, Jackson, Tyron, I know you guys spent a lot of time with Yeah. Twenty twenty. What was that relationship like? Yeah. Congrats to him on a great career. Um, I mean, one of a kind in terms of his speed and uh, watching him growing up, watching him and Vic slang it around. And um, he's a he's a great he was a great player, a great receiver, a great uh, specialist with the ball in his hands in different situations. And just being able to be around him and you know experience um, playing with him, throwing to him. Uh, he's he's a different he was a different cat. He was a different cat. Jalen, the confidence that you show on the field, uh, first, where does it, it come from? And then how do you maintain it when, when things might not be going the way you want? Um, I just I just try and go out there and play, uh, play hard and, you know, you know, enjoy the moment and um, just execute. I don't, I don't really, uh, I think about anything else. When, uh, when Jake was hitting his, his field goal uh, to force overtime, there, the cameras showed you kind of shaking your head on the sideline. Just curious what was going through your mind at that time. Yeah, um, you know, there's, there's never a lack of confidence in Jake. He got the best right <laughs> right leg in football. Um, he's doing a really, 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 really good job. Um, I think in that moment I was, um, it was out of my hands. And so I could only think about the things that um, I could have done better to that point because uh, we truly, you know, there's an opportunity for us to go down. Um, and we had some setbacks with false starts, um, different things that came up, miscommunication. Um, and so I was I was upset with that. But he built us out, and um, we had an opportunity to – we didn't even get the ball first, you know. So defense held him to a field goal, and we had an opportunity to finish, and then we did. Like your, your father was at the game on, on Sunday uh, – what was his instant reaction when you saw him afterwards, and, and what did he think about the Sixers game the next game? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, he obviously enjoyed the game. He was happy uh, Happy we were able to pull it off. Um, and then just, you know, taking them to uh, – you know, I rarely go, but you know, I've never been able to see LeBron play. I never met him. Um, he's a great player, a uh, great – I mean, he's so transcendent um, in terms of the things that he's been able to do um, on the court, off the court. Um, he's changed the game in, in so many different ways. And um, I just thought it'd be cool to, to come come see him, go see him, and obviously I had the opportunity to meet him. And, um, you know, I wanted to shake my dad's hand too. So, you know, that's a guy that my dad has watched you know, uh, being an older guy, watched him grow into the, I mean, uh, the monumental figure he is now. Um, and he's been doing it for 21 years, 22 years, something like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just our love and respect for him. How does it feel like he was very excited to beat you? How does that feel when somebody of that stature? Yeah, it's, um, it's just uh, it's an appreciation there. And like I said, he's a... Uh, and everybody has different walks and everybody has different avenues that they go down to achieve, um, you know, their goals and uh, chase their dreams. And, you know, a lot of people that look up to him and, um, you know, that's, that's, something, to, that's something to appreciate. Um, but just, just meeting him and uh, feeling that mutual respect and um, just being able to talk to him. He's very down to earth and uh, definitely a competitor and about his business. So much respect to him.
Thanks, John. Thanks, Thank guys. You.